Hello everyone. In the last video, we uh, we came up with an uh, we came up with an equation that uh, uh, said that the time constant or the time required for the signal from this end to reach this end that will be proportional to L square. We came up with that, uh, that particular uh, problem statement. Now try to uh, let, let us try to uh, solve this problem. What we'll do is now we'll insert a buffer at the center, something like this. We have inserted one buffer in the exactly at the center of uh, uh, the wire with the length L, and now the load that was present over here that shifts to shifts to this particular point. Why is it so? Because this after, because in the continuation of the wire, this is the next break point that it sees. This is the next uh, 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 next repeater that it sees, not this one. So now the length of the wire is not continuous, but we are breaking the long wire into two short into two different halves uh, by placing a buffer over here. So we have cutting the wire into two halves it is as good as we are cutting the wire into two halves and placing uh, uh, some logic cell at the center so the length of the wire is now now uh, no more uh, l but it is l by 2 so the length of the wire will be l by 2 this still holds good for your drive resistance driver and this is your uh, this is your load for this particular section of the wire this will become your driver and this will become the load so let us now try to solve this equation with respect to length which is not l but it is l by 2 so in in this in this particular uh, model what we'll do is we'll replace all l by l by 2 we in the equation also we'll do the same we will uh, replace everything by l by 2 so now the time constant or the time required to charge this particular uh, load capacitance is proportional to l square by 4 so it's still the l square term is still there but it's divided by 4 so we have some amount of benefit over here we have some we have some we have gained something over here because it's now it's now not proportional to l square it is proportional to l square by 4 so in contrast to uh, what it was before when you had a single long length of the wire so this is a much better equation not the no, not the uh, uh, most uh, not, not the best one but it is a, it is better than the previous one so we we can still consider this as a, as one of the solutions or 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 placing one buffer could could solve the problem uh, not completely but to a partial level yes it can solve the problem but now uh, let us try to see what happens if we try to insert even more buffers let us try to solve this equation again so we'll have two more buffers placed over here which is exactly at the center of this segment and this and this particular segment basically exactly at the center of l by 2 so now your load capacitance which was initially over here then it shifted to this buffer now will shift to this particular uh, this particular endpoint because the buff because the wire is now is now is now uh, uh, the the length the long uh, the long wire is now broken into equal equal halves again so we break the wire over here we again continue and we break the wire over over here and we break the wire over here and this is the final uh, final segment so we have we, we have uh, broken the long wire into short halves and try to re reach these distances at equal intervals so now now, now, now this this uh, this particular length was l by two, so this will be now your l by four. So try to we'll try to change them. We'll try to make this l by four. We'll try to also change this equa uh, change this particular uh, uh, RC network to l by four, and also the equation will also change to l by four. So uh, if you see now we are gaining uh, now the now the uh, time constant or the time required for the uh, for the signal to reach from this point to this point will be proportional to l square by 16 so we are gaining even more so this is this is what this is what we um, uh, uh, this is this is the buffering problem and how do we solve this so if we can even we can keep on adding buffers at, uh, again over here and so on but adding too many of buffers will have uh, will have certain uh, uh, impacts on the design it first the, the first impact is it will increase the area of your design it will uh, you will have unnecessary uh, uh, unnecessary buffers that is being placed all over if you keep on adding buffers exactly the center and so on second problem is all these buffers will be switching and since this is a clock network this is a heavy heavy switching network so the so all the buffers will be switching and in the in the event of switching it will demand for current it will demand for current from the supply so for example let's say at a time all the three buffers are switching at the same time because the clock will be reaching over here and clock is common to all the three buffers so the three buffers will be switching at the same time at the same time the, the three buffers will demand some let's say each buffer demands x amount of current so three buffers will demand 3x amount of current and 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 the supply the power supply has to supply that particular 3x amount of current to all these particular buffers 
now let's say uh, for a multi million circuit there are the number of buffers is very huge it's it's in millions so all the millions of buffers start demanding current at the same amount at the, at the same time so it becomes very difficult for the power supply to supply that particular amount of current to the to the buffer so that increases your power that increases your dynamic or switching power that is that is the second thing and the third thing while while transiting from logic 0 to logic 1 there is a finite amount of time for which your both the transistors are turned on in that particular period when your transistors both the transistors are turned on there is a short circuit path from from the, from the power to ground so assume that this, these are we are talking only about three buffers and three buffers are switching at the same time and you have a common period a common time period while switch while transition that that the, that the NMOS and PMOS of of both the of uh, of the CMOS will be turned on. So all the three buffers will be demanding will uh, will be short circuited or the uh, there will be short circuit power that will be flowing from from VDA to ground when all the three buffers are switching. So if we talk about three buffers and now if we talk about million millions of buffers, so imagine the amount of power that will be getting lost by having huge number of buffers. So we should have buffers, but a reasonable amount of buffers, not very uh, not a too many buffers but also not too less buffers so 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 th 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 there is th that is the way that we have to optimize the number of buffers in the clock path so we, we know the problem we know the solution that adding buffers will solve the problem but over adding it might create new problems for you so so try to try to uh, we, we try to avoid uh, adding uh, too many buffers and uh, and yes buffers is a, ad, uh, adding the buffers is a solution logically as well as analytically we have proved that uh, how adding buffers will affect uh, the uh, affect the uh, rc time constant and eventually the transitions and the delay of the cell so so this is what uh, this is our, what a simple proof for it so now let us try to analyze this particular circuit itself for example we send this particular waveform so this particular waveform now has to travel a distance l by 4 it it, it it doesn't have to travel the complete distance for till uh, till this point because there is a the, the the length of the wire is now only l by 4 so it has to try and charge uh, uh, try and charge this particular load capacitance so this particular cl consists of the wire capacitance and the interior and the internal capacitance of this particular uh, uh, buffer so we will talk about a lot of capacitances what are the different types of capacitances in a different section uh, for now the uh, this particular thing has to charge the load and the wire so so the uh, when this waveform propagates at this particular point will will find a waveform something like this which is reasonably good because uh, uh, because this particular waveform was able to charge this particular uh, uh, was able to charge this particular wire and the internal capacitance so we assume that the waveform will be also be able to charge this particular wire because since they are of equal length so the waveform more or less remains the same which, which we supplied at the input and this is what is expected we we we, we, uh, we have to try to keep maintain the waveforms at the input and the output of a logic very close to the transition time should be very close as close as possible which is uh, in most of the case not uh, so easy to do but yes that is a recommendation that the input transition and the output transition should be equally constant so that that will reduce the amount of short circuit power that will not completely eliminate but that will reduce the amount of short circuit power that flows to from vdd to ground okay so we'll we'll talk about all those in the power uh, power dynamic in the power section so let's not uh, deviate from ourselves from this topic so this waveform will reproduce a waveform something like this because these are repeaters same thing uh, say, uh, same when this waveform propagates further the waveform that we achieve over here will be something like this it is very close to what we had at the input and the waveform but the waveform that comes after this point and it reaches over here the waveform goes very bad uh, any any ideas why any any guesses why why will why why will this happen so the so the reason for this is now from this particular point you have this l by 4 agreed but you have the other l by 4 as well you have this l by 4 so it's 4 l by 4 it's it's like l it's it's again back to basics you have you have to again charge l so you have this l by 4 we have this l by 4 you have this l by 4 you have this l by 4 it 4 into l by 4 is again l so you are again back to basics from this point and you have, for example you have a fan out of 4 and the reason is we had a we, uh, in the circuit we had a fan out of 4 from this particular end point to the uh, to the particular wire end point so so this is the reason that you are seeing a bad transition waveform over here 
what we'll do is in the next video we'll try to uh, we'll try to build a tree we'll try to solve the problem of uh, of this particular issue how to actually calculate the number of buffers that needs to be added in this particular path so let us try to have a look into all this in the uh, in the next video thank you